Elon Musk reveals the secret behind the Dojo supercomputer. Ever since the release of the Dojo supercomputer, people have been wondering how it works and what kinds of secrets it holds. Billionaire entrepreneur and tech giant Elon Musk has finally revealed some of the secrets behind this amazing machine in a new interview. But how does it compare to other high-performing computers? Will Dojo be a step forward for the high-performance computers industry and Tesla's own automotive AI initiatives? Hello everyone, welcome to Elon Musk Planet. For a few years, Elon Musk has hinted that they were working on their supercomputer. In 2020, Musk hinted that Tesla's dojo would have an exaflop capacity, which is equal to 1,000 petaflops, or 1 quintillion 1018 floating point operations per second. This means that dojo could become the new world's most powerful supercomputer. Tesla later went on to announce the arrival of dojo, its wholly internal designed supercomputer at its 2021 Artificial Intelligence Day. During the AI Day, the Tesla CEO was the first person to confirm the existence of the dojo program. We do have a major program at Tesla, which we don't have enough time to talk about today, called Dojo. That's a super powerful training computer. The goal of Dojo will be able to take in vast amounts of data and train at a video level and do unsupervised massive training of vast amounts of video with the Dojo program, or Dojo computer. In June 2020, Elon Musk tweeted, Dojo, our training supercomputer, will be able to process vast amounts of video training data and efficiently run hyperspace arrays with a vast number of parameters, plenty of memory and ultra-high bandwidth between cause. More on this later. According to Musk, Tesla's inspiration for Dojo came from the immense amount of video data it uses to train its neural nets and was able to collect from its large fleet of existing vehicles. For the purpose of training its computer vision neural nets, Tesla was dissatisfied with existing HPC, high-performance computing solutions, and decided to develop their own. Could be wrong, Musk tweeted, but I think it will be the best in the world. The heart of the design is the Dojo D1 chip, which offers incredible computer performance and bandwidth. Tesla found that the available computer computer platforms were inadequate when it came to building self-driving technology by training its enormous neural networks. However, the company also made a hint that Dojo might soon be made available to other companies working on AI. According to the Top 500 list, which is updated twice a year, Fugaku in Kobe, Japan, is the world's undisputed fastest supercomputer, with a demonstrated 442 petaflops. It is widely believed that Fugaku is just getting started and could exceed an exaflop in its current configuration. This is three times faster than the number Number two entrant, Summit, from Tennessee's Oak Ridge Laboratory, which has a top speed of 149 petaflops. Dojo would be ranked sixth with approximately 68.75 petaflops. Because the next three supercomputers are so close in terms of performance, 61.4 to 64.59 petaflops, Dojo could be in seventh, eighth, or even ninth place. Emil Talpas, who worked on various Opteron processors at AMD for nearly 17 years, gave the presentation on the Dojo processor that his team created. Debjit Das Sarma, who was a CPU architect at AMD for nearly as long and is now the autopilot hardware architect at Tesla was also mentioned in the presentation. Bill Chang, the carmaker's principal system engineer, spent a decade and a half at IBM Microelectronics designing IP blocks and working on manufacturing processes before assisting Apple in moving away from x86 processors and towards its own ARM chips. And Rajiv Kurian, who has worked on autonomous car platforms at Tesla and then Waymo, discussed how the Dojo system works. Ganesh Venkataramanan, senior director of autopilot hardware at Tesla, and a speaker at 2021 AI Day is in charge of the Dojo project. Venka Taramanan was also a key member of AMD's CPU design teams for nearly a decade and a half. The defining goal of our application is scalability, Talpas explained at the end of his presentation. We have de-emphasized several mechanisms found in typical CPUs, such as coherency, virtual memory, and global lookup directories, because these mechanisms do not scale well when we scale up to a very large system. Instead, we used a very fast and widely distributed SRAM storage throughout the mesh, and this is supported by interconnect speeds that are an order of magnitude faster than those found in a typical distributed system. According to Talpas, the Dojo core has an integer unit that borrows some instructions from the RISC-V architecture, along with a number of additional instructions that Tesla created. According to Talpas, Tesla mostly implemented the vector math unit from scratch. He did mention that this custom instruction set was optimized for running machine learning kernels, which we interpret to mean that it would struggle to run crisis. Ganesh Venkataramanan, Tesla's senior Senior Director of Autopilot Hardware and the Dojo Project Leader gave the presentation at Tesla's AI Day. The engineer began by revealing Dojo's D1 chip, which uses 7 nanometer technology and provides breakthrough bandwidth and compute performance. He had an actual D1 chip on stage. The engineer commented on the new D1 chip. This was entirely designed by the Tesla team internally, all the way from the architecture to the patch. This chip is like GPU-level compute with a CPU-level flexibility and twice the network chip-level I.O. bandwidth. Andre Carpevi, 
Tesla's senior director of AI revealed in a presentation that the largest cluster is made up of NVIDIA's new A100 GPUs, putting it in fifth place in the world. An FP32 performance metric quantifies the machine's ability to perform single precision floating point operations per second. F64 or double precision floating point calculations are typical supercomputer measures. So this is a massive supercomputer, Carpathy stated. I actually believe that in terms of flops, this is roughly the number five supercomputer in the world. So it's actually a fairly significant computer here. In order to train systems that can cope with these obstacles, Tesla first collects mountains of data. For us, computer vision is the bread and butter of what we do and what enables the autopilot, Carpathy said. And for that to work really well, you need a massive data set. We get that from the fleet. And indeed, the data set is massive. One million 10 second videos from each of the eight cameras on the sampled Teslas, each running at 36 frames per second and capturing highly diverse scenarios. These videos contain six billion object labels, including accurate depth and velocity data and total 1.5 petabytes. You need to train massive neural nets and experiment a lot, Carpathy said. Training this neural network, like I mentioned, this is a 1.5 petabyte data set, requires a huge amount of computation. Accordingly, he said, Tesla invested a lot into this capability. The Dojo instruction set supports 64-bit scalar instructions and 64-bit SIMD instructions, as well as primitives for transferring data from local memory to remote memories. It also includes support for semaphore and barrier constraints, which are required to align memory operations with instructions running not just within a D1 core, but across collections of D1 cores. The core also performs stochastic rounding and can do implicit 2D padding, which is commonly done by adding zeros to both sides of a piece of data to tweak a tensor. Talpus did clarify that the D1 processor, the first in what would presumably be a line of Dojo chips and systems, is a highly throughput general purpose CPU and not an accelerator in the traditional sense. Or to put it another way, Dojo is designed to accelerate itself rather than relying on an external device. Each Dojo node has a single core and is a full-fledged computer with a CPU, dedicated memory, and I.O. interfaces. This is an important distinction because each core can do its own thing and is not reliant on shared caches, register files, or anything else. The D1 is a superscalar core, which means it supports instruction-level parallelism within its core, as do most modern chips, and it even has a multi-threaded design to drive more instructions through that core. However, multi-threading is about doing more work per clock rather than having isolated threads that can run separate instances of Linux as a virtual machine. So the Dojo implementation of simultaneous multi-threading, SMT, lacks virtual memory, has limited protection mechanisms, and the Dojo software stack and applications manage the parceling out of chip resources. The D1 core is a 64-bit processor with a fetch window of 32B that can hold up to eight instructions and an eight-wide decoder that can handle two threads per cycle. This front end connects to a four-wide scalar scheduler with four-way SMT, two integer units, two address units, and a register file for each thread. There is also a two-sided vector scheduler with four-way SMT that feeds into a 64B wide SIMD unit or four 8x8x4 matrix multiplication units. Each D1 core has a 1.25 megabyte SRAM that is its main memory. It is not a cache, and if anything, the DDR4 memory that hangs off of the larger Dojo network, more about this in a second, is treated more like bulk storage than anything else. That SRAM can load at 400 gigabytes per second and store at 270 gigabytes per second, and the chip has explicit instructions to move data to or from external SRAM memories of other cores in the Dojo machine. Embedded in that SRAM are a list parser engine that feeds into the pair of decoders and a gather engine that feeds into the vector register file, which together can dispatch information to or take information from other nodes without a bunch of additional operations, as is common with other CPU architectures. Tesla intends to use the new supercomputer to train its own neural networks in order to develop self-driving technology, but it also seeks to make it available to other AI developers in the future. Because it was Tesla's first attempt at developing a supercomputer in-house, the company believes there is a lot of room for improvement, and it is teasing 10 times improvements in some levels of performance in the next version of Dojo. So there you have it. That is all about the Dojo supercomputer. What do you think about this supercomputer? Do you think it will prevent AI threats in future? Please let us know in our comments section. If you found this video helpful, please press the like button and subscribe to Elon Musk Planet for more content like this.